Devious Think for joining us. You are watching OBN Horn of Africa, your favorite uh, media channel. In this edition, we'll be discussing about uh, Ethiopia-Somali lands uh, cooperation. And to discuss this matter, I am joining by Dr. Edna Adan, aka Mama Somaliland. Uh, doctor, thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to join you. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Who is Edna Adan in the very first place? Let's know a bit about your life history. I'm a Somalilander. I am a nurse and a midwife by profession. Uh, I'm someone who uh, was educated in Europe, in the UK. And when I retired in 1997 from working with the World Health Organization, came back to Somaliland, to my country, built a hospital, built a university, became the foreign minister of my country, and now I'm running my hospital and the university, and I'm also the special envoy of the president of the Republic of Somaliland. Yes. not. To I'm 87. Well, well, I'm 87 you're... years old. Okay, good job. I think that is very important. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I am proud to be a Somalilander. Okay, uh, you, you are notably known for two things. One, you're a humanitarian, and on the other hand, you're a um, uh, freedom fighter. Uh, I mean, uh, you, 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 you have done a lot uh, for uh, liberty and dignity of uh, Somali landers. How, 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 how this happened? Like, uh, humanitarian at the same time, uh participating in a in struggle and questing for liberty and uh dignity. Thank you. Well, first of all, I am I am somebody who defends human rights. I defend justice. I defend uh the rights of people to decide their future, how they run their, their country. Um and I um I do what I think is right. I speak out for the voiceless. God gave me a voice. God gave me opportunities. And when I see that the majority that my country, Somaliland, has been de denied its right uh, to its rightful identity, the right to call itself by the name that it has always had for centuries, uh, when we are denied recognition of our status as an independent sovereign nation, I speak out and I ask the world. There are institutions that have been put in place to verify the status of people, of nations, their legitimacy. Um, and if one is not given the right to... Uh, speak for itself, uh, then I think that is an injustice. And it goes against my rights um, as a citizen of this world, as a nation of Somalia that has been, that has gained its independence in a rightful, legal way through a proclamation, a royal proclamation from Britain, because my identity is the identity of the former British Somaliland protectorate that gained its independence from Great Britain in 1960. And when a neighboring country, Somalia, the former colony of Italy, uh, tells the world that it owns Somaliland, well, that is not right. And history proves that statement wrong. Geography proves that statement wrong. And the international institutions that are in place to correct uh, such false statements proves Somalia wrong. Um, yes, we are neighbors. Yes, we have similar ethnic backgrounds. Yes, we try to uh, form a union between all Somali-speaking people, but it didn't work. 
it only worked for a short time. And when it did not work, the people of Somaliland who had decided to first unite with neighboring Italian Somalia, decided to withdraw from that attempted union uh, because it did not fulfill the aspirations of our people who had decided to unite. Nations unite, peoples unite, companies unite, individuals unite. It's a voluntary union. It's a union that comes about from the desire to improve things. Uh, when people marry, they don't marry because they want a divorce. They marry because they want that union to become a family and have children and grow. When companies unite, they unite because they want the companies to grow together. When nations unite, they unite because they think that people, it is good for the people of, of the two countries that have united. And other nations, many nations have done that. Europe has done that. After the Second World War, countries that had gone to war with each other have decided that to unite was more beneficial than to fight. And they formed the European Union, which is very successful and which is growing and which is bigger than the initial countries that started the Union. In Africa, we have examples. Uh, Gambia and Senegal, two neighboring countries who had different colonial backgrounds. Senegal was French, Gambia was British. They shared the, Gamb the river Gambia. They had ethnic similarities, tribes that were similar and both countries, and they said, well, why don't we unite? Why don't we form Sene and Gambia? But six months later, it was found that the two countries were better friends, were cooperating better when each was separate, Senegal and Gambia. And Sene Gambia was not working. So they united as independent nations and they reached the decision to disunite and separate and go back to their status quo of Senegal and Gambia. And each one did that without fighting, without killing each other, and without the world punishing one or punishing the other. Nobody punished Senegal. Nobody punished Gambia for uniting, nor got punished for separating. Other examples, Egypt united with Syria and Iraq and formed the United Arab Republic. None of them changed their borders. They became the United Arab Republic but then when it did not work, they separated. Iraq became Iraq, Syria became Syria, Egypt became Egypt. Syria did not say it owns Egypt. Iraq did not say it owns e Egypt. And Egypt did not say it owns Syri Iraq or Syria. Now my question is, when Somaliland and Somalia united, nobody punished us for it. When we decided to unite, we were independent nations. And Somaliland, former British Somaliland protectorate, whose independence was on the 26th of June, 1960, 
is well recorded in the United Nations, in Great Britain, and in the Security Council in 1960. 34 nations, including Egypt, the United States, 34 nations, sent congratulatory notes to Somaliland when we gain, gained our independence. We were the first Somali nation to be independent. And Somalia, or well, Italian Somalia, was the second. Because when Somaliland was independent, Somalia was still an Italian colony under United Nations trusteeship. And 42 nations in Africa, my uh, other uh, uh, nation in the Horn of Africa, Kenya became independent in 1963. When Somaliland became independent in 1960, uh, in 26th of June. So British Somaliland, former British Somaliland, when the United Union with Somalia, and was never formalized, by the way, the union between Somaliland and Somalia was never formalized. Well, there is no document. There is no document that says there was a union. There was no MOU. There was no contract. Somaliland has a royal proclamation, which I have sent you and you can also use as a okay. document to prove because it is recorded. Well, so no. what I am defending now is the right that, that have been denied, the, all the rights that belong to my people, Somaliland, who have been denied by Somalia. Well, uh, doctor, uh, I mean, you, you've been heard uh, appreciating the the, 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 the uh, MOU deal between Ethiopia and Somaliland, as well as the ongoing cooperation and um, this uh, brotherly ties between Hargesa and Addis Ababa, aka Finfine. Uh, what is, what's your thought about the ongoing partnership between these two nations in the Horn of Africa? I, I need to correct you. This partnership did not start with the MOU. Yeah. This this partnership between Somaliland and Ethiopia goes back four centuries. Yes, I know. I, I, I wanted been... you to tell me in line with MOU. I, I will. I mean I that will. the relation has started during this MOU. I know. Historically, it started a long time ago. It's a long time. Yeah. It's a long time ago. We've yes. had good relations. We have trade relations. We are neighbors. We have been there. God created us side by side next to each other. Uh, we share a lot of ethnicity. I, we, we look like each other. Uh, the, but the MOU that was signed, that was uh, announced in January, is something that will bring our partnership and our coll collaboration to a, a much higher and a much better level. So my personal opinion is I support it, and I think it's a good thing. The same way I uh, fully supported that uh, the port of Berbera be used by uh, for Ethiopia, all the food, uh, one third of the food aid going to Ethiopia is coming through the port of Berbera, not from January, but for many, many, many years, as far back as 2002, when I, 2003, when I was foreign minister. Uh, and it's because the, the um, um, collaboration and the trade, the movement, the volume of trade that was going from coming from Ethiopia to the port of Berbera and from Berbera to Ethiopia was so was increasing all the time. And that is what attracted the United Arab Emirates and uh, DP world to um, expand the port because the, the volume of trade was too big for the port of Berbera as it was in 2017 and 2018. And that's why it was the volume was doubled and it is even e more increasing now. So to um, um, agree to lease uh, a, 
um, a space in a in the coast of Somaliland, the eight hundred and fifty kilometer coast of Somaliland, is an agreement that countries reach, that neighbors rent each other. Ethiopia is using many other ports. Why not formalize the port, the the, the uh, trade and the, the the volume of trade that it has with Somaliland. Somaliland is sovereign to decide who it agrees with. Um, neighboring country Djibouti has been the, 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 the traditional port of trade with Ethiopia, which is very good. And we support that. It's just that we would be increasing the ports that will give Ethiopia more access to a sea, to a port. Ports yes. support each other. Yeah, what's your message for those who bang um, uh, wrong drum about the ongoing uh, uh, partnership? Uh, we, we can mention uh, some nations, uh, some um, stakes, uh, which 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 disdain the ongoing partnership between Somaliland and Ethiopia. Well, I, I'm somebody who strongly believes in democracy, and these people have the right to say what they like, but it doesn't mean that it is right. Uh, so there's been since we separated from Somalia in 1991, and we closed our border where the British had left it when we were British Somalian Protectorate. And by the way, that is in accordance with the uh, constitution of the African Union and the Organization of African Unity, that colonial borders cannot and must not be changed. Somaliland is, respective, is respecting that. And we just closed our border and we just rebuilt our country. We established peace and stability. We have no peace keeping forces to keep peace in Somaliland. We keep the peace. The people of Somaliland keep the peace in Somaliland. Have installed democracy, have political parties. We have elections after the other seven elections. Presidents and candidates and political parties have been elected, have been electing who they choose. Somalia has not been able to do that. Has no government in place and still pretends and tells the world that it owns Somaliland when it is totally false. Yes, uh, yes. My question so is... If like, they disagree yes. with it, mm. they're, 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 that's, that's their opinion, but it doesn't make yeah, that's, them that's, right. That, that's my and question And there are institutions, too. excuse me, yeah. there are institutions in the world in place to, uh, to settle arguments like that. Yes. And to tell Somalia... Mind your own business. Mind your own space in Mogadishu that you cannot even keep in peace and you need 40,000 peacekeeping forces to keep the peace in Somalia, in Mogadishu. Somalia, mind your own business. Run your own country. Bring peace to your people. Your people are suffering. It's only two or 3,000 people in the top who are exploiting the people of Somalia. Why not bring your country to go back to peace? Yes. Why not look for friendly relations? Why make trouble? Why pretend, why want why do you want to make war when you cannot even defend yourself from terrorists in your own country? Why make why make trouble in the Horn of Africa? Why make trouble in the waters of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, which gives a, a, a waterway for one third of the shipping lanes of the ships in the world go through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal in Egypt. It's because we have peace that the ships can grow, can go through the Gulf of Aden, the Red Sea, and the Suez Canal. If there is war in the Horn of Africa, it will affect many ports, it will affect many people, and it will not solve the problem of Somalia. Somalia needs to find a solution for its problem in a different way, 
it cannot remain jealous and envious of the progress of neighboring nations. It cannot be jealous that Somaliland, that Somalia bombed, is still alive. Yes. Somaliland, that Somalia sent MiG aircrafts to bomb and level to the ground, is still alive and doing better than Somalia. Somaliland is described as, a, as an African miracle that without international recognition, we have developed to where we are today. Somalia, with all the money in the world and all the taxpayers' money that goes to it, cannot even control its capital city, Mogadishu. So Somalia, grow up and stop telling the world that you own Somaliland when you don't even own your own country, Italian Somalia. Your regions, you cannot travel to the regions of your federal states. The president of Somalia is persona non grata in, in other regions, federal regions of Somalia. So don't look beyond the borders of Somalia. Look, put your house in order and work for a peaceful Horn of Africa. More work for peace to come back to this Horn of Africa where we have people who need peace. We have drought, we have poverty, we have unemployment. We have big enemies that we need to fight together. Why do we have to fight the healthy? Why do we have to risk the lives of the healthy? Let us find peace, let us find solutions. And don't let us become a fight for proxy wars. Why, don't, why do we have to become a battlefield for others? Um, I, we are in a part of the world that is any trouble in the part in the Horn of Africa affects many people, nations Wonder. on the other side of the, of the border, other side of the of the sea, the okay. other side of, of, of the, the, the Indian Ocean, the other side of the Gulf of Aden. All of these become affected. Uh, many analysts... Uh, Innocent victims. Yes, Doctor. Many analysts are saying that uh, this MOU deal and uh, uh, Somaliland and Ethiopia's partnership will serve the entire Horn of Africa. Uh, would you it agree? Would. How? And I'm sure it will, and I hope it will. The MOU becomes implemented, and the uh, partnership between Ethiopia and Somaliland grows according to the terms of the MOU. It will make life, it will create jobs, it will improve the, uh, the, 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 uh, the economy of the nations, not only Ethiopia and Somaliland, it will even improve the, the economy of Somalia. It will improve the economy of those beyond these countries. Other countries are landlocked. It will become an example that Africans can come together to find a peaceful working solutions for their problems which find solutions to find the, you know, unemployment, create jobs, and improve their economy. Why do we have to, to depend on aid when we can become the source of income for so many more? When we can improve the education in our youth? When we can improve trade with so many nation countries? Take the examples of, of those who have succeeded. Look at Singapore. Look at look at look at the the, the, the tra trading hubs that have that become created. Look at the potential for Africa, all of Africa. Much of Africa will benefit from this MOU if we find a peace. We find peaceful neighbors who understand, who have the intelligence to understand, and not be blinded by this envy. And say, why do we not? Why did, how can Ethiopia deal with Somaliland and not with us? Hassan Sheikh was offering Ethiopia, uh, said, why don't we, we can give them three and four ports, but who is going to trust Ethiopia? Who's going to trust the goods that are coming through a Somalia um, port? 
You need to have something you can sell first. You need to have peace. And you need to have the discipline. And you need to have the track record. record. This MOU the, the, you know, is based on the successful cooperation that has been between Somaliland and Somalia for more than two or three decades. It's not something that just came over on, on the 31st of December and, and agreed on the 1st of January. It, it took 30 years and more to grow, to be analyzed. People don't go into uh, uh, agreements like that, blindfolded and based on emotions. It, it is based on, on track record, on trust, on respect, on wanting to move in the same direction, moving forward, fighting poverty, fighting insecurity, giving our children a chance to grow and become educated. That's how MOUs are reached, agreements are reached, yes. and they're respected, yes. and they're respected. Of course, uh, you, you've, uh, uh, I mean, uh, forwarded your insight and remarks, commentaries about the reaction of Somalia regarding this um, MOU uh, deal and uh, partnership between Ethio Ethiopia and uh, Somaliland. How about Egy Egyptians' reactions? Cairo's reaction. Uh, recently, the uh, uh, government of Egypt has deployed uh, troops uh, to Somalia and uh, uh, arms and arsenals to 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 the to to, to Somalia. Uh, what was I mean your your reaction while you see that? Uh, my reaction is that there's, there's enough arms floating in the Horn of Africa, and adding more arms is just adding fuel to a fire. My comment is that Egypt is known as the mother of the world. Umm al dunya is wise. I will do what is wise and what is peaceful and what is legal and will dialogue and get what it agreements that it needs. If it has issues with Ethiopia, well, we don't go into this. We have nothing to do with this. And Somalia should not involve uh, other than Egypt to fight its own war uh, because it cannot fight Somaliland on its own. But I, Egypt is an old country, it is a wise country, and I'm sure it will think twice, and three times, and four times to do what is right, what is just, what is peaceful, what will grow the economy of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden and the Suez Canal. And together, working together, we can grow. Destroying each other is just destroying each other, which will not bring any benefit to anybody. So I think it's time for cool heads, wise heads, knowledgeable heads to come together. It's time for mediation. It's time for dialogue. It's time for interventions. It's time for the wise people of the world and institutions of the world. Okay, Dr. Edna Adan, philanthropist, human rights advocate, uh, as, as well as uh, who, who staunchly fight for the betterment of Somali landers. Thank you for your precious time, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Appreciate it. Okay. Give your thing for watching. This brings you the end of our edition for today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Take care.